Hello guys, what's up? What's up? What's up? Long time no see. I hope all of you guys are doing good. I know it's been more than a week since our last video of physics for class 10th has come out. The reason is, guys, I was not feeling so great. I, uh, as you guys know, I was COVID positive and my health had got a little bad. But now I'm back, back with full energy. So I hope that you're gonna have a fantastic session ahead today. So once again, people, my name is Anup and this is Vidantu 9th and 10th English channel. Now, before we get started, do not forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel because guys, we have some amazing things planned for you on the way. So make sure that you're a part of the family so that you don't miss out on anything that is important. All right, guys. So I'd like to start off this session with a very, very, very simple question. In the chat box, in the comment section, tell me what is the type of lens used in this image? And also tell me what is the exact position of the image? All right, can you guys do that? Try it out and let me know in the, in the comment section how many of you guys are able to figure out what type of lens is being used, what are the properties of the image and also the exact position of the image. Now. I know that a lot of you guys might be scratching your head and telling, sir, how can you find out the exact position of the image? You never taught us. Now, here's the thing, guys. From whatever we've learned in the past, when we talked about the ray diagrams of concave and convex lenses and stuff, you now know that the image can be located between certain things like it could be between the center of curvature and the focus it could be between the focus and the pole so you know all of this it could be beyond the center of curvature as well but can you find out the exact position the exact location of the image probably not but not until now right today guys we are going to solve exactly that problem we are basically going to understand what is the sign convention of a lens and more importantly we will also understand what is the lens formula All right guys so once again my name is anup and i hope that you guys are doing fantastically well your family members are also doing fantastically well you guys are all staying safe i am an aerospace engineer by profession for all those who do not know i love physics i'm in love with this subject of physics and that's why i took up this subject as a subject that i want to teach and apart from that i am uh, basically from bangalore uh, so all the kannadigas out there hello macha welcome to today's session and i'm basically from kerala but i was brought up in uh, karnataka so that's a little bit about me and uh, apart from that uh, i think that's pretty much it like uh, the photo that you see over here is a photo that was taken when i was probably 65 maybe 70 kilos right now i'm close to 90 so for all those who are new you are able to see this contrast because that was something which was a different phase of my life when I, that was when i joined vedantu but after joining vedantu eating 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 made me like a little elephant uh, uh what to say a green potato not green what do i call it? a brown potato is what i've become so that's why i look like this that's why there's a contrast between the image over there but it's the same person just that the image is a little contrast there's a lot of contrast between the image right anyway so that's a little bit about me so let's get started with today's session guys once again uh let's make sure that we'll understand this concept to the fullest extent and it's not going to take long trust me guys this topic itself in itself is a very very small topic so we'll try to keep it as precise as brief and as to the point as possible but i want you guys to stay till the end make sure you put it down in the comment section if there's anything that you want me to explain a little bit more deeper if there's any topic that i went a little too fast anything of that sort let me know in that in the comment section as well all right let's get started I would like to start off this session with a, a couple of notification guys. The first thing is this, that there is a Telegram channel open for all of you guys out there, all of the students who are a part of Vedantu 9th and 10th English channel. You can also be a part of the Telegram channel where you would be getting a chance to connect with your master teachers, all those amazing teachers that you see on Vedantu 9th and 10th English. You guys can connect with them. You can also get the regular schedules of all the sessions, everything for that particular week of every single subject, you'll be getting that over there. And you can also get the faster updates, um, you know, uh, on the Telegram channel rather than on the, uh, you know, on the 
uh, the community page of the YouTube channel. Now, apart from that, guys, we also have the pro exclusive micro course going on where I will be teaching you a certain set of topics right now as we speak. Uh, be a pro in Lens Bra is going on and master electricity like never before. So if you guys want to study these concepts with me on the Vedantu platform, I'll tell you how to do that as well. Other than this, guys, one more very, very important initiative that I want to talk about is this. The global pandemic, guys, right? Things that are going on around you. The global pandemic has caused a lot of disruptions. It has led to many families losing their loved ones, including me, right? And it's something which is very, very uh, disappointing to see because you never expected all of this to happen. And, uh, and a lot of kids... Right, a lot of kids have lost both their parents because of the global because of coronavirus, and keeping all of that in mind, the Help India Learn initiative that is start that was started by Vidantu is pledging twelve crores to help more than twelve thousand students all across the con all across the country so that they can get the quality education that they would have got if their parents were still there. First of all, I don't want to take this as something that, you know, as a marketing gimmick. Let me tell you that very honestly, because uh, it's someone's life we are talking about. And Vedanta was giving an opportunity to those kids so that they can also grow and become better in their lives right and uh, you guys can also be a part of this initiative you can uh, either contribute in terms of money or you can also contribute in terms of social support all you have to do is this guys i am pretty sure every one of you guys are on twitter and facebook and instagram and stuff all you have to do is this put down this particular message on whatever social media you get that is i pledge to act against covid19 I am hashtag a young warrior. Now, this is an initiative started by Vedantu, not as a marketing gimmick. Let me tell you that again and again. It is not a marketing gimmick. It is something to help those families overcome this very tough situation, right? And I've personally lost someone close, so I know what it is like, right? Anyways, uh, apart from that, guys, if you want to, you know, take part in this, all you have to do is use your phone or tablet and do five simple steps, and you'll also be getting a certificate to prove that you were a part of this initiative. Uh, all you have to do is, in WhatsApp, type YMA, Young Warrior, uh, and send it to this number, 9654504141. And apart from that, you can also send it on Telegram as well, YMA. Uh, basically, start, uh, your, all you have to do is search, you report India, and press YMA and send it to them. And on Facebook also, you just, all you have to do is join this uh, Facebook Messenger using this link, and you guys can be a part of this initiative. You'll also be getting a certificate and whatever contributions you can do from your side even if it is 10 rupees that is going to help someone right the 10 rupees if you have 100 students and i'm sure every one of you guys are capable of at least donating 10 rupees right 100 students that's 10 thousand rupees right that's thousand rupees that is that is something which can provide food to a family right so why not all right. Anyways, guys, apart from that, couple of other announcements. Also, the weekly schedule is right here. So today there'll be two uh, sessions. There'll be two sessions coming out. One is uh, light thirteen, where we'll be talking about sign convention. We'll also have uh, light fourteen. Uh, session number fourteen also coming out today at eight p.m. We also have uh, tomorrow, uh, we'll be having light fifteen coming out, and then we'll be doing light one shot series as well, where we'll be doing ton of quiz questions and we'll revise the entire chapter so guys make sure you subscribe to the channel because like i told you the maka is on its way so make sure that you're a part of it right anyways talking 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 i lost track of time so let's quickly do a backtrack round and get to understand if you guys were able to realize or understand what was taught in the previous session once we're done with the backtrack round i'll go on to today's topic once i'm done with today's topic once again we'll do a small little quiz time as well now all you have to do is this guys make sure that you put down the answers in the comment section or in the chat box and try your best to get the answers right all right so here's your first question guys go ahead and answer it 30 seconds is what i'm going to give you here it is what type of image is formed when a rays of light actually intersect if the rays of light actually intersect 
after refraction what type of image is being formed is it a real image is it a virtual image is it called as a projected image or is it called as a curved image 10 more seconds guys before i give the answer if you need more time please pause the video and put on the answers for yourself right in three two one you know the answer guys it's a real image because the rays of light are actually intersecting after refraction so yes it is going to be a real image second question when an object is placed between the focal point and the convex lens and the pole of a convex lens the image produced is what if it is between the focal length and the pole what is the type of image that is being formed is it real reduced that is diminished and inverted is it real magnified and inverted is it virtual magnified and upright or is it virtual reduced and upright reduced here is nothing but diminished and uh, basically upright means erect all right so go ahead guys i'll give you another five more seconds that's pretty much it in four three two one now here's the thing guys you know the srk rule that is basically guys when the object is placed between the focus and the pole of our convex mirror or sorry convex lens the image formed is going to be a virtual image magnified in nature and it is also going to be upright that is nothing but erect because this is the only condition where you're getting a virtual image otherwise wherever you keep the object in front of a convex lens the image is always going to be real but this is the only condition where you're getting a virtual image an easy thing to remember right moving on to the next question guys here's another one for you people let's see if you guys are able to get this one right for a concave mirror a light ray coming from the direction of the focal point will be reflected what if there's a ray of light coming from in the direction of the focal point basically passing through the focus what do you think would happen to this ray of light in the case of a concave mirror options are it'll pass through the center of curvature it'll uh, be parallel to the principal axis it is going to back uh, it is going to go back through the focal point itself or none of these things would happen it's a concave mirror and the light ray is coming from the direction of the focal point what do you guys think i'll give you the answer in five four three two one the answer guys a ray of light that is passing through the focus after reflection be it concave or convex will always become parallel to the principal axis one of the most important standard incident rays for both concave as well as con convex lenses right super easy question no so guys with that said let us now understand about sign convention let's get into the topic for today all right i want everyone to give me 100 percent of your attention for the next let's say seven to ten minutes that's more than enough for us to understand this entire concept so here's the thing guys in your mathematics i'm pretty sure every one of you guys would have done or played with something called as a graph now one of the things about graph is that in a graph we basically take a point which is generally known as the origin then with this origin we'll draw one line which is basically horizontal and one line which is vertical yeah let me just erase that because my lines are very very straight yeah, let me see if i can okay no that's not possible wait is it possible for me to draw a straight line without having to use my hand unfortunately not all right so yeah so you have something called as a horizontal uh line and a vertical line now this horizontal line is basically uh you know uh called as x axis so you have x over here and this is called as x dash this is your cartesian plane so you have basically four quadrants right you have the first quadrant the second quadrant the third quadrant and then you also have the fourth quadrant now here on the vertical line this is called as a y axis and this is called as y dash right i'm pretty sure every one of you guys know about this right and this here is called as the origin now what is so special about these quadrants and what is so special about these cartesian planes let me just explain that very 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 quickly to you people so here's the thing guys in these cartesian planes you guys know that the x axis is taken as positive so all the values from the origin to the right hand side is taken as positive and all the values that is there on x dash which is nothing but left hand side of the origin is taken as negative so this is taken as negative and everything about the origin is taken as positive all the values towards y is taken as positive and all the values that is below the principal axis that is y dash is taken as negative right i'm sure every one of you guys are aware of it 
Now all you have to do is this, guys. All you have to do is place a lens on this axis. All you have to do is place a lens on that origin. And when you place a lens on that origin, here's what happens. Copy the exact same sign convention onto this now. So here's what happens, guys. All distances behind the lens is taken as positive. All the distances behind the lens is taken as positive. All the distances in front of the lens is taken as negative. That is towards the left hand side of your, uh, you know, the uh, here it's the, uh, the optical center is taken as negative. And all the distances above the principal axis, this here is your principal axis, right? This is the principal axis. And on the principal axis, you have your, your focus, the twice the focal length and the optical center as well. Uh, so you have this, this is the principal axis. So all distances above the principal axis is taken as positive and all the distances below the principal axis is taken as negative it's basically the exact same thing as your cartesian plane so guys the sign convention is as simple as that now it is the same for mirrors as well so if you guys remember the sign convention of mirrors lenses is exactly the same as that of the mirror so it's as simple as that. So if I have an incident ray, like for example, I told you this, that the object is always kept on the left hand side when you talk about a ray diagram. So if I have an object, the incident ray is coming this way. So all the direction, all the distances in the direction of the incident ray, which is nothing but behind the lens is taken as positive. All distances on the other side, that is opposite to the incident ray, that is basically towards the left hand side of the optical center or the same side as the object is taken as negative and all the distances above the principal axis is taken as positive and all distances below the principal axis is taken as negative. It's as simple as that. So all of those people who know about graphs already, sign convention is exactly the same thing. So you don't have to worry about it at all. You don't have to panic about this because it's as simple as that. All right, guys. Now, guys, here's the thing. If I go back to the ray diagrams, we know that in a convex lens, the focus is basically on the left, on the right-hand side, sorry. It's basically behind the mirror. Since the focus lies behind the mirror, the focal length, that is nothing but the distance from the optic center to the focus, which is the focal length, will be taken as positive. Why? Because it lies behind the lens. On the other hand, if I talk about a concave lens, since my focus lies on the same side as that of the object, like I told you, it's a virtual focus that you get over here. The rays of light are diverging, but after di uh, basically they're diverging away from one another, but when you extend them, they will meet at the focus. So here, the focus lies on the same side as that of the object. More importantly, it lies on the left-hand side itself. It lies in front of the lens itself. So here, guys, the focus is going to be negative. The focal length is going to be negative. Apart from that, guys, we also have a couple of other things that you must remember. All lengths, no matter whether it's concave or convex, the object distance will always be negative. The object distance will always, always be negative because you always keep the object on the left hand side of the lens, be it concave or be it convex, we will always keep the object on the left hand side. So your object distance, you will always be negative, but the image distance, depending on where the image is formed, it can be positive or it can be negative. If the image is formed on the right hand side, then that is behind the lens, then it's going to be positive. If it is formed on the same side, then it's going to be negative. Simple as that. All right, guys. So I hope the sign convention has been clear now. If there is any other doubts, guys, please do let me know that in the comment section. And we will try to, you know, send out something, uh, a simpler way for you to remember it, right? So let me know in the comment section if you guys have understood the sign convention or not, so that I can help you guys out a little bit more. Because ultimately, guys, all of this is for you people. It is not for us. It is for you guys. We already know it. It's for you, for your information. So let me know in the comment section if you guys have understood that or not. All right. Now, let's go back to that first question. How can I find the exact location of my image? So here's the fact, people. The ray diagrams that we learned is very important. 
it tells you the approximate position of your image it tells you if the image is going to be formed between the focus and the center of curvature or between the focus and twice the focal length it tells you whether the image is going to be formed between the pole or the focus but does it tell you the exact location absolutely not so in order to solve this problem guys we have come up with something called as a lens formula just like the mirror formula we also have something called as a lens formula now the mirror formula if you guys remember basically your mirror formula was something like this your mirror formula went like uh, 1 by v plus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f the only thing different over here for lens formula is it is 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f the only thing that is different is that the the side is going to be negative in the case of lens in the case of mirrors it is going to be positive so yes guys this is what it would look like uh, the one picture that i have has been used multiple number of times and it will be kept on using for another couple of decades as well but yeah guys this is what it looks like it tells you the approximate position but it can't tell you the exact location of the image now why is that exact location needed guys for example let's say i'm making a microscope or let's say i'm making a telescope now i cannot tell the buyer let's say that you are the one buying the telescope that the image will be formed somewhere between this between 20 centimeter or 50 centimeter he'll be very disappointed with that right so in order to find out the exact position that is why we need to use your lens formula so the lens formula goes on like this 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f where v is the image distance u is the object distance and f guessed it right the focal length Alright guys, so that is the topic for today people. Now before I come to the quiz time, I have some exi exciting news for you guys. A very very exciting news. So here's the thing guys, in NTSC stage 1, about more than 120 state selections has been made from Vedantu. The people who took up the NTSC course have did have done excellently well with more than 120 selections and it's still going on the counting is still going on but from more than 17 plus states all over the country we have made it happen so for all those who believe that sir studying online cannot produce cannot you know we, we cannot produce results with this this is a clear proof of that so the NTC subscription guys i'll tell you how to do it so all the NTSC courses would have all the subjects from physics, ranging from physics to phys uh, to mathematics, to chemistry, to biology, to mental ability tests, to even social studies as well. 139 selections is what we are standing at this point of time. It is the highest in any institute in the country. And yes, people, 60 plus online live sessions with 50 plus chapter wise tests, uh, 14 plus mock test. And also guys, all of these sessions will be recorded so you guys can watch it whenever you want, wherever you want. It's up to your discretion and unlimited doubt solving people on the Vedantu app as well as inside the session. So you'll have the class teacher to solve the doubts inside the class and you will have the doubt experts in the Vedantu app to clear your doubts on Vedantu app as well. You'll have in-depth solutions of all, this, all the questions. You'll have the analysis of the previous year NTAC papers. You can get the entire summary of all the subjects, all the chapters that has been taught, the key concepts, the important formulas, and also the class recording. And if you use my coupon code AMEPRO, you also get a flat 10% discount also. So enjoy people. So how do you enroll into the course? Let me just quickly show you how to do that. Let me just open up new tab and uh, show you uh, how to enroll into the courses let me just quickly go to Vedantu 9th and 10th English channel where are you yes okay so here's the thing guys uh, so let me just go to the channel and uh, yeah subscribe to the channel by the way now this is uh, on in incognito so don't ask sir why have you not sub subscribed i have subscribed it is just that this is the incog incognito all right so let me just quickly go to one of the videos that i've uh, recently come up with okay this is okay this is vedanta 9th and 10th mm -hmm. yes happens all right <laughs> all right i myself went to the wrong channel happens da happens all right so yes guys where am i pinky pinky ponky 
come out come out it's been a long time since i've come out with a video so yeah <laughs> my video somewhere on the bottom all right yes light finally all right so guys uh, so what you have to do is this go to uh, the show more go to the description and click on subscribe to vidantu pro courses and if you use this particular link you guys can choose which grade which type of course you are looking into so let's say you want to look into ntsc crash course click on ntsc crash course and you can see that there are two different plans for you guys now both these plans the quality of education is in no way uh, you know less it is absolutely the same it is just that there are few features that might be different you will have the live interactive online sessions you will have the test series and analysis you will have the assignments and notes you will have the doubt solving inside the session as well so what is different is this in vidantu light you cannot get your doubt solved in the vidantu app whereas in vidantu classic you can get the vidantu app as well and get your doubt solved outside the session as well so the price might be a little different because the features are different so vidantu light cost you around 4050 rupees and vidantu classic would cost you around 5000 rupees with that extra feature and these are the amazing teachers who are going to be with you throughout these these teachers i from iisc we have teachers from iisc who will be teaching you for your ntsc imagine that and it is one of the most premier institutes in the world not just in india india but in in the world so we have shivam gupta sir from iisc we have mahima ma'am who will be teaching you in english uh, we will have anjali ma'am who has done her bed msc and all of the things uh, she will be teaching you basically chemistry and so on and so forth so you will be getting the best of the best teachers in no way are we compromising on the quality of education and that is the whole motto of vidantu never to compromise on the quality of education and we've always 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 been up to that itself we've always maintained that standard and we'll keep on maintaining that standard you can check out the timetable of the class you can check out the results of all the tough exams that we have cracked be it je be it neat be it class 12 be it class 10th whatever the exams are we have made sure that we have produced results in all of those right guys so let me tell you this much that you guys are all in safe hands and you can always trust that we will be here with you forever right we are not going anywhere we are always going to be here with you right so yeah guys that's pretty much about vidantu now let's get into the quiz questions and try to understand if we you and me have totally understood the concepts or not or is there something that we need to cover up even more right so here's the first question guys let's get ready so the question is this according to the sign conventions the sign of the focal length of a concave lens is positive negative can be positive or negative or can't see if it's a concave lens guys what is the focal length going to be like let me draw the diagram you have 10 seconds to figure it out but in the meantime let me just show you how to do it so you have a concave lens your focal length is obviously going to be on the same side as that of the object so what is it going to be if it's in front of the lens is it going to be positive or negative Come on, guys! You know the answer. In three, two, one, it is negative. It is on the same side as the object, so it is going to be negative. Wow, bete wa, maj kar di. People, it's absolutely wrong. <laughs> the answer is wrong. It's not positive. It's going to be negative for sure. It's going to be negative. All right. It's a concave lens. For a convex lens, it is going to be positive. All right. But for a concave lens, it's going to be negative because it's the same side as that of the object. I am so sorry that the answer was wrong. It's it, the wrong. The answer given over here is wrong. But what I told you is correct. All right. It's negative. All right. Next one. Heights measured below the principal axis is positive, negative, can be positive or negative or can't say. Again, guys, think about the sign convention. Think about your Cartesian planes. If the height is measured below the principal axis, what is it going to be? All right. Five seconds. I think it's a super easy question, but let's see if you guys are able to figure it out. In four, three, two, one, it is gonna be negative. Because guys, in your Cartesian planes also, all the distances above the origin is positive. All distances below the origin is negative. So here also, just like the Cartesian planes, when you talk about the sign convention for lenses or be it mirrors, below the principal axis is taken as negative. simple all right next question the distance opposite to the incident light ray if a ray of light is incidenting and you're measuring the distance opposite to that 
what is it going to be? Is it going to be positive, negative? Can be either positive or negative or can't say. Super easy question. Now. Let me just show you how to do it once again. I'll give you the hint also. Like nobody's going to do this. Anyways, so this is the object. Incident ray is coming this way. So if you're measuring the distance in the opposite direction, what is it going to be? Come on, guys. You know the answer. It is negative. Once again, negative. That's all. All right. The answer is negative. Okay, where is the answer for this one? Okay, uh, unfortunately, the option is taken as okay. So, yeah, uh, what? All right, <laughs> uh, okay, uh, a couple of mistakes. It's okay, human, we are all humans. It's okay. All right, next question which of the following? So, the answer to this question, guys, is going to be negative. So, this is a question from the previous session. Unfortunately, we have uh, repeated the same thing. It's okay. Here's another one which of the following is true for a concave lens? If I take a concave lens, which of this is true? It can be real. It can make a real as well as virtual images. It can make erect and inverted images. It can make only virtual and erect images. It can only make real and inverted images. If I talk about a concave lens, what is it going to be? You know the answer, guys. For a concave lens, the image is always what? Ved. That is Vedantu's Ved. Virtual, erect, and diminished. So here guys, the right answer would be option number C. It's always going to make a virtual and an erect image. Concave lenses can never make real images and it's always going to be smaller than that of the object. All right guys, so this is your homework question. Uh, as the object moves from infinity to the, op the optical center, the image moves dash the lens and becomes dash. Let me know what is the answer. So let's take this as a, a concave lens. So if I talk about a concave lens, what do you think would be the answer? Let me know that in the comment section as well. So that's all guys. And also people, the pro exclusive course. So once you enroll into the pro subscription course that I just talked about right now, once you enroll into the pro subscription course, how do you do that is very simple guys. Go to see a grade 10 if you, let's say you want to prepare for term one. So click on that. Once you enroll into these term one courses, you guys, can enroll directly for free for the pro exclusive micro course as well so you can see this that the complete course for the term one would be done over here for just a nominal price of 14,400 now I know that it seems like a lot of money but to make it a, a little bit easier on your pockets guys you can have an EMI of up to 1,600 per month so all you have to do is pay 1600 per month in order to take up this course and you'll have the complete again there's no uh you know what to say will be no there'll be no uh, uh description uh, or say there'll be no discrimination in terms of uh what to say whether uh, the syllabus is going to be complete or not absolutely will complete the syllabus and will make sure that you guys are doing your very best in your first term board exams as well all right and to make it better guys we also have the vedantu's improvement promise which gives you this guarantee a sure shot guarantee that yes your scores will improve and if your scores does not improve you can get that money back, people. So that's the kind of guarantee that Vedanta is giving you. And if you enroll into these Vedanta's Pro subscription courses, you guys can also be a part of the Pro exclusive micro course as well. Right, guys? So that's all for today. Uh, thanks a lot for being very patient. Once again, it's very, very, uh, it feels very good to be back to interact with a lot of you guys over here. And I've been getting a lot of WhatsApp messages. Sir, did you leave YouTube? What is happening on YouTube? The reason was guys, like I told you, I was not feeling so well. I was admitted in the hospital as well. Uh, my health had uh, become very very bad that is why i could not come uh, and uh, meet and interact with you guys but i'm feeling a lot better so hopefully it'll never be back again and we'll have a fantastic year ahead but we'll make sure that none of this would be affecting our uh, syllabus completion we'll make sure that the syllabus is complete so that you can also revise before your term one right guys so don't worry about it thank you for joining catch you guys in the next session until the next time we meet this is Anup signing off for the day. Do not forget to like, share, subscribe. Catch you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye. See you at 8 o'clock then. Bye-bye guys. Take care.